Skies are gray, I am watching, catching teardrops in my hands. On the silence, as it's ending, like we never had a chance. Do you have to make me feel? What is self harm? that on purpose that causes pain physical damage to the body in any way it could be um, physically cutting it could be burning um, I've seen even I even personally consider eating disorders to be self-harm you know starting themselves uh, bulimia overeating also um, even um, like not sleeping, purposely staying up all night or as much as they can and not sleeping. That's also sort of a form of self-harm and they do it to themselves purposely. The purpose being to cause harm to themselves. Self-harm is the act of deliberately harming your own body, such as cutting or burning yourself. Andrea Carnaggio, licensed counselor. Depressed isn't the word I would use. The word I would use is like empty, numb, I would never really consider myself depressed. When I felt depressed, it was sorrow, sadness over something. But when I felt that things had really caused me, like pushed me towards self-harm, were not depression, it was just this empty, numb feeling of nothing that's more accurate. From 2009 to 2011, self-harm rates increased by over 13,000. Are you surprised? No, I'm not. Why do you think they increased that much? Because of bullying and the way kids men mentally, physically harm each other and create a social norm. Of those we interviewed, 81% were female and 19% were male. Of those, 14% were freshmen, 47% were sophomores, 28% were juniors, 6% were seniors, 3% were super seniors, and 3% were parents. 47% said they had self-harmed, while 53% said they had not. Among the multiple choice questions, many people answered that they used cutting as a method of self-harm. Also, many of them said that they have stopped self-harming if they ever have. Also, many of them cited poor self-confidence or something such as um, a way to fuel their emotions and get them out. And a lot of people said that they knew a lot of people that had self-harmed. Some people said 20 or at least 20 that they knew that had self-harmed. Others said 16 and at least 10. It turns out that a lot of people know others who have or do self-harm. It's much more widespread than you would originally think. A way to escape Stress. the pain in life. Not being liked. Bullying. Depression. I am not good enough. Because of the low opinion society makes me see in myself. Did you notice how many different reasons there can be? Bullying is not the sole reason for self-harm. I mean, if you want to get rid of self-harm completely, first you have to raise awareness of self-harm itself. How truly... 
very prevalent mm -hmm. it is in our society how much there is of it you know there are people I know a cheerleader who harms herself a cheerleader a high school varsity cheerleader you'd never believe it and I never would have thought people like that would harm themselves it's like they, Everything's perfect. They, yeah, they have that perfect world. And I write short stories that was this girl, she was with RC cheerleader, she was dating the football captain, she was, you know, all this, all this, all this, all this, all this stuff that's just wonderful. You know, her parents were rich, she had the little brother who was the soccer player or football player or whatever. You know, everything in her life looked perfect. And it's not. You know, perfect doesn't exist. Yeah. It's people are broken. It doesn't matter who they are, they're broken people everywhere and they look the more perfect someone's life is i feel like the more likely it is that they don't that they do harm themselves because that perfection also there are standards that go with it you want to get rid of self-harm you have to get rid of bullying you have to get rid of abuse you have to get rid of rape you have to get rid of um all kinds of stuff um even you know, there's honestly no indirect way of stopping self-harm through stopping other things because there's so many reasons that people can or do harm themselves you know if you can get rid of the abusive dad that might stop what you know this group of people who self-harm but it's not going to stop the people who self-harm because of bullying or it's not going to stop the, the girls who were raped i hear about somebody harming themselves and instantly i want to be mama i want to I wanna, like, hug them protect them love them you know because a lot of times that's one of the main things that people need but also you know i get really really what does it mean it's just kind of protective like you know you mess with the mama bear's cubs she don't kill you i'm kind of like that too only my cubs are hurting themselves so i'm just like i don't know whether to yell at you or hug you if i if possible i try to talk to them and see if i can do anything about it and if i can't i Ask him if I have permission to tell someone else. Another thing I've noticed is if, if anybody out there is trying to stop, if you relapse, don't look at it as a relapse. You didn't relapse. You've just gone, you know, don't look at it negative, look at it positively. You know, most people, if they cut after being clean for several weeks, months, or something, you know, I had somebody who came to me and they're like, um, I was clean for four months and then I cut. I relapsed. It's like, it's like I relapsed. It's like, don't say relapsed. It's honest. It automatically sounds negative. Say I was clean for four months. Now let's see how long I can go. Now let's, you try to like make it a game. How long can you go? How much longer can you go? Eventually, it's not going to be fun. Since there's no way of stopping self-harm completely, how could we possibly come up with a solution? Well, that's the thing. See, we can't. But what we can do is raise awareness of self-harm and how to help someone who is self-harming. So, to do that, we've created the Black Cloud Project, as well as a website to go along with it. On the homepage of our website, it gives a brief summary of what the documentary project is, and in what way the Cloud Project pertains to the documentary itself. You can also see recent postings from our Facebook page, titled The Black Cloud Project. Here, it explains the general idea of what self-harm is, also gives you some clues onto why someone would self-harm. Following that, it gives an, an example of some common misconceptions about self-harm. And lastly, it explains if self-harm either is or is not addictive. On this page, you will learn the many different signs of self-harm. To be able to help, you must first know the correct ways to approach someone, and this page will help you. Here, you can learn how to help someone who is a self-harm victim, and also how to help yourself if you are a victim. Our website also includes some helpful hotlines and chat rooms that you can go to if you need to talk to someone. We even have a page for the Butterfly Project, another project to raise awareness for self-harm. On this page, you will also have the privilege of reading other perspectives on these topics. 
Along with all this, there's even a list of quotes that you might enjoy or find interesting. As well as some songs you might enjoy when you're feeling down. There's also a contact form that you can send questions or your story to if you'd like to share. Last but not least, there's a page on the Black Cloud Project. It includes the rules, which are draw a black cloud on the armorist hand of someone while telling them about the Black Pro Cloud Project and why they should help stop self-harm or how they can help. You can also draw one on someone who self-harms. If they do, then draw the cloud while helping them out. In turn, that person has to draw a black cloud on the arm of three more people. They can also draw one on more people, but they should add more raindrops to their own clouds to show new people they've helped. Then post your pictures. It also gives a template of what the black cloud looks like, as well as a gallery of a few of the black clouds that we've drawn so far, or that have become of our project. You can check these out at our website. So, once again guys, you can find us on Facebook at the Black Cloud Project, you can send us a contact form, or if you know us in person, you're welcome to talk to us or email us anytime. Thousand plus scars and eight suicide attempts, and I'm still here. Yeah, I have scars. They made me who I am, so why would I change that? Life will always get better. You just have to stay strong and hold steady through it. It can't rain forever, so you just have to make it to the sunshine. Clayton Fane Stock. Don't do it because there's always someone there for you. Don't discriminate, just allow people to be themselves, and if you have a problem with that, ignore them. And now that you know about self-harm and how to help, I challenge you to draw a black cloud on someone. Three someones, to be exact. I've given you a starting place by drawing a black cloud on Cody, and now he has to draw one on three other people, and I'd like you to do the same wherever you go. So this is the Black Cloud Project. Skies are crying.